Hey everybody, welcome to the training today. Uh, today we're going to train you guys on how to find good products to sell on eBay, which is kind of the golden question. And if we can do that in the space of 25, 30 minutes here, I think I think this is going to be a big success. It's This is a strategy that we teach our clients um, that tends to be a little more on the advanced side. Uh, so don't I don't want that to scare any of you newer clients away from this strategy. It's a good one to use, but uh, it is a little more on the advanced side. And you'll see what I mean as I get in and show you how to do it. Um, it is contained in our webinars, so you should have had some exposure to some exposure to this strategy. We don't really have a name for it. I think sometimes we call it the advanced research method um, or the advanced method for doing selling through retailers. But I just think this is a tremendous way to find good products to sell. Because if any of you guys can relate to this, and I imagine some of you can, if you're doing our retail selling strategy, which quickly defined would be using an internet retailer, usually a major retailer like Walmart or Target or Sears or Amazon or whomever, and listing their products on eBay and reselling them on behalf of the company, that's retail drop shipping. And and it works it works incredibly well if done right. Here's here's the challenge. And and tell me if you guys who are listening here live with me can relate to this at all. Sometimes we tell you to go with kind of the the method where you throw a bunch of products up against the wall and 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 you see what sticks method, right? It's the it's the spaghetti method. Um don't put a lot of research into what you're listing. You're just research. You're just listing products as fast as you possibly can. I've heard feedback from my clients that sometimes they feel a little overwhelmed by that because they'll show up on a place like Walmart.com or heaven forbid Amazon.com and they look at the homepage and we'll do that with Walmart right now and they'll say I have no idea where to even start listing products. You think about Walmart and look at all the look at all the departments they have here. Look at all the potential categories and subcategories you could get into, right? So a lot of my clients say, Trevor, I'm not sure where to even start. Help me know what I should start listing and what I should start selling. Well, there's different ways to do that, but I'm going to suggest one way today in our training to help remedy remedy that situation. Okay? Can any of you guys relate to that? that have done some of the retail selling? Have you ever felt a little overwhelmed by just the, the sheer number of things that you could list? The whole goal of this is to find the winners and get rid of the losers. So you're gonna be, you're gonna be optimizing your eBay store by testing different products, keeping the ones that sell, and getting rid of the ones that don't. But it can be overwhelming. All right, so here's the solution, or at least I think one solution that, that could really work for you guys. I So let's call it the advanced method. I, you know, if we're going to term it anything, let's call this the advanced research method, okay? We don't, we don't really have a name for it, but that's what we're going to call it in this case. So this is our advanced research method. So what I like to do is right now I'm going to try to find, and I, and this really is step one, okay? You know, we should write out these steps. Let me write these out so you guys can kind of take notes and stay up stay up with me. All right. So we'll call this, we're going to call this the advanced research method. Okay, step one, okay? Um, find a random product on a supplier site. Okay, that's really step one. So let me write that down for you guys. Find any random product from a retailer's website. Okay, that's step one. So let's do that. And remember when I say retailers, let me put in parentheses, you know, that could be Walmart, that could be Amazon, that could be Target, etc. Okay. So let's find a product. Anything works. I, you know, I, I could grab really whatever. So I'll just, I'll just grab something. Um, let's go to one of their departments. 
since uh, maybe Christmas is around the corner, maybe we can go to the Christmas decor section. I like to try to stay with, with seasonal things sometimes. Um, let's do... I don't know. I guess it doesn't really matter. Indoor holiday decor. Let's try that. And let's just pick something at random here and see if it works. Um, how about this little? Uh, how about this little this little product right here? Okay, this is totally random. We're doing this on the fly, guys. I haven't pre-planned any of this. So here you go. You got this little holiday time Christmas village five-inch battery-operated holiday fountain. Okay, kind of a random product, piece of indoor decor. Let me highlight the title and copy it, okay? That's step one. Step two, or we'll just call this two. Search for it on eBay. Okay, that's gonna be step two. So let me let me go to my eBay here and let's search for it. Uh, you see how I just I just copied the title exactly how it was from Walmart and just pasted it into eBay just to see what comes up. And lo and behold, look at this, guys. We have a whole bunch that are showing up here. Now, notice the pricing that you're seeing on eBay. I see $51.38 at the top, $40, $46.50. These are not the same product. Nope, a lot of these below aren't the same product. So really, it's just these here at the top. Oh, here's another one, $49.90. That's it. So there's five or six of these that are being listed right now on eBay. Anywhere on the high side, it looks like you can find one for $51.38. That's on the high side. On the low side, I think that 40, no, this one is on the low side, $38. Although this isn't free shipping. If I click on this listing, I can see that they're going to charge me $15 for shipping. So that's not, that's not on the low side. So this is probably your lowest right here, $40. So you could expect to be somewhere in the middle. What was the price from Walmart again, guys? You remember? 30. 30 from from Walmart. Okay, but is it really 30? What's our cost here, guys, from Walmart? If it's listed at 29.94, those of you guys who know how much this is actually going to cost, what's what's going to be our real cost, which would include shipping and any associated tax? If you're not familiar with doing this with Walmart, you may not know. Remember, shipping is free only on orders that are over 50. So we're going to have to pay some shipping for this. Well, if if you want to see about how much it costs, I'll, sometimes it's good just to add it to your cart. Add it to your cart and try to check out. Hold on, I've got something else in my cart. Make sure your cart is free of other items. Let's remove this item. Okay, here we go. So they're saying shipping is going to be four ninety seven. So I'm going to say five dollars in shipping plus $2 in tax estimated. I'm probably looking at $30, $37 out the door. Right? 37 bucks, okay. Well, I mean, that puts us, if our cost is 37, it's gonna be hard to compete with these guys because they're the lowest at 40 in free shipping. Because um, remember, we've got some eBay fees if we sell the item that we've got to account for. But you could be on the higher side. 
right? You could you could definitely be higher. You could be like these guys right here. They're priced okay, right? Anyway, that's not even the point. I just that's just out of a matter of curiosity right there. We're not we're not really trying to compare pricing. It's just interesting to look. You could make money with this. It looks like. And and you would you wouldn't be the cheapest, but you wouldn't be the most expensive. You could sell it for less than fifty one and still make money for sure. Okay. Next step. So we're, we've searched for the product. Okay. Um, I I'm going to say identify the seller of each product and review their listings okay that's step three now how do you identify the seller of each of these different ones well you just click on the title so i'm going to start by doing that let's click on the title um these guys have sold one of these by the way it looks like i want to see the seller's information which is always right over here um, and then I can click on this link right here. I know this is kind of small, hard to see, but it says see other items. Okay. That's going to help me. That's going to bring me into basically this person's store and I can see all of their listings. Okay. All right. So they've got 127 uh, listings. And I can scroll down and I can I can see what it is they're listing. There's the one that we're that's a, the one in question right here. But you can see all their other stuff. Right? Okay. Now, in this screen right here, um I like to look at the ones that are being watched by a lot of people. So look for watchers. Okay, so I'm gonna add that to this steps here. Find products that are good sellers, okay? And one way you can identify that is by looking at the watchers. So like this one right here is 10 watchers, it looks like, 10 people watching it. By the way, guys, what's a watcher? When I say something has 10 watchers and you can see it right here in red, what, what does that mean exactly about the product? Let me just zoom in just a little bit so you guys can see this better. Here we go, 10 watchers. Yeah, it just means 10 people are, are very interested in the item currently. They've saved it to their favorites list or their watch list. So that's usually a good sign. Now, if I click on this item, it's gonna show me more information about it and it'll show me if any have sold recently. And, and according to this, within the last few days, none have sold that I can see, but it does have a lot of watchers. That right there should be a clue in to maybe this being a decent item on eBay. That's one way you can do it. Let's go back here. Now that I'm still looking at this person's items, 127 results, I can come down and I can filter, okay? There's an option here on the left-hand side where I can look at their sold listings. Do you see that? I'm going to click on sold listings and I can see of their items what's currently selling right now. Okay, what's today? Today's the 20th. They sold this item today. Yesterday they sold this item. The day before they sold this item. The day before that this item. Can you see a trend in any of the items right now as I scroll through these? Yeah, it's Christmas items, isn't it? I'm seeing nativity sold. I'm seeing some, just some general holiday decor. Some little, some little in, you know, home decor trinkets are selling. Right? Okay. So we can at least conclude that this person is selling a lot of Christmas items, but that's no revelation to us because we should assume that that's, that's the type of stuff that a lot of people are selling right now. What we want to do is 
is, is we want to see where they're getting their items. My guess is they're probably getting a lot of their items from Walmart. And you can probably verify that by just copying one of their titles and searching for it online. So like you can you can usually tell what's a Walmart item if you look or what's a what I mean these aren't most of these items look like they're professionally um photographed. Like this one right here, this six foot pre lit tinsel nativity, blah blah blah. Let me click on this item. They sold it for one twenty. In fact, it shows that they sold four of these at one twenty. So I can click on four sold. And I can see uh, November 14th, November 17th, November 17th, okay? These are real items that they've sold on eBay. They're selling them for 120 The question is, can you find this, a similar item? Um, so let's see the original listing right here, and let's, let's just take a look at the item, and let's see if we can get a clue as to, you know, as to where it might have come from. A lot of times, I'll just... You know, I really will just take this or part of their title. It's a it's a six foot pre lit tinsel nativity scene, and I'll and I'll search for that on Walmart first to see if I can find it on Walmart. And if I can't find it here on Walmart very quickly, then I'm going to turn around and I don't see it there very quickly. I'm going to go to Google and I'm going to do a search for it and see if I can find it here on Google. Or even better, not just Google, guys. Do uh, google.com slash shopping. It's probably a better way to quickly look. Do a search, and there you go. All right, so um, this quickly shows us uh, where we can get these items from. Now, these are from eBay. That's from eBay. That's from eBay. That's from eBay. eBay, eBay, eBay. Bonanza, eBay, eBay, Bonanza, Bonanza, eBay, eBay, Bonanza. Looks like most of these are, are from eBay. This says from five different stores. We can click on this one and see if we can see where it might be coming from. Nope, these items are mostly, at least from what I can see, mostly from eBay. Let me copy this title and do a search one more time and just copy a little bit more of the title. See if I can find it anywhere else. Nope, don't see it anywhere else. See, you can see the sellers right here. Bonanza, Bonanza, eBay, eBay, Etsy. We're basically looking for where we can get the same item, right? Because it's clear they've sold it four times. And we see that on eBay right now. They've sold it four times. So the question is, is where can we get it? Let's just go to Google and see if that'll shed any light on it. Okay, here's one from Home Depot. Ah, see, that tells the story right there, doesn't it? This is the product. Um, but it's out of stock at Home Depot. See, everybody who was selling it was probably getting it for 90 bucks from Home Depot and then reselling it on eBay. This person was reselling it for how much on eBay? 120. So they were they were making 20, 25 bucks on it. There you go. It's out of stock. Okay. Easy enough. Let's go find another one from this person's items. So they, so their supplier was Home Depot. Interesting. Um, how about this one right here? Or I don't know. I guess we can grab any of these. What should we grab? Let's grab this one right here. I'm trying to figure out where this seller's getting all of their stuff. Some sellers get all their stuff from the same place. Okay, so this is. Uh, Another Christmas decor type item.
Okay, I'm going to copy this title again. And then let's head over, let's, let's head back over to Google Shopping. Let's go google.com slash shopping. Let's see what we can find. Another Home Depot item, you see that? See, I like Google Shopping, guys, because it, it quickly helps me find this kind of stuff. Home Depot item, let me click on it here. This takes me to Home Depot. Okay, so I can get this for 80 bucks, it looks like. $80, um, shipping is free, it looks like. How much are they charging for it on eBay right now? 110. 110. How much are they making on this item? Well, on, on its surface, there's a $30 difference between what they're getting it for and what they're selling it for. But you'd have to minus out the eBay fees. They're probably making 15, 20 bucks on this sale. But this is an item that sold, and uh, you know that it's sold. You could go and you could do the same thing. You found you found their supplier too. It what you guys got to understand is that doing retail drop shipping is not it's it's not totally unique to just us, right? There are other people out there that do some retail drop shipping. In fact, eBay is full of people that do it. Some much better than others, right? And you guys being in our training program, we feel like we can train you well enough on this strategy uh, that you should be able to do it better than everybody else. With you know you doing better titles and being and doing better research but i I think it's wise sometimes if you're struggling with the with the method of just kind of throwing throwing stuff up against the wall and seeing what sticks to do exactly what I'm showing you right now and look to find other people who are already doing this strategy and look at their items to try to find out what they're selling on a regular basis and then go do the same thing. There's nothing wrong with that. That's just called good competitive research, right? That's looking at your competition, seeing what they're doing well, and then you following suit. So, okay, you know, in 10 minutes here as we've been talking through this, and obviously if you were doing this on your own, you could go much faster because I'm, I'm talking you through it as we do it. But we found one item that could be a good item to sell. It's a Christmas item. I can get it for 80 bucks at Home Depot. It sold for uh, for 110 on eBay recently. Does so that make sense, guys? What we're trying to do here? I know this isn't a new strategy for some of you guys that have that have been here with me for a while, but I think it's helpful. Um, let's go back and let's just review the steps to what we're doing, and then we'll, we'll do we'll do another example. I guess we were on step four. We said find products that are that are good sellers. Step five is search for the same product on google.com slash shopping. List the product for yourself. Okay. That's the that's the method to the madness. All right. If you guys are catching up on on your notes, I'll, I'll keep the screen up for just a second. There we go. If you want to take some notes, go ahead and do it. So the whole goal here of this entire strategy is, A, let's identify sellers that are doing the same strategy we are. B, let's find what products that they have that are selling well. And then C, let's go find them for ourselves. That's really the strategy. So next time, instead of staring at walmart.com or amazon.com, target.com, sears.com, and wondering to yourself, there's, there's a million products here for me to list, what ones are going to be good sellers? Because that's the question I get from a lot of you guys. Help, Trevor, help me find products that are actually selling, good products to sell. This is the research that I would do. Okay, let's do it again real quick. Let's, let's do it one more time. Is that making sense to you guys? Questions about what we're trying to do here? Or, or is this or is this making sense? All right, let's try it again. Let's close out these screens. 
And let's just start back on eBay one more time. All right. Let's do it with uh let's do it with Target this time. Target.com. Let's grab something at random. Let's go to their furniture section here. Let's say, you know, it doesn't matter who we start with. Any retailer is fine. Let's just grab the first item listed right here. Okay, this is a Luther storage cabinet in brown. We copy the title, don't we? So let's copy the title. Let's go back to eBay and let's do a search for it. Okay, here's the one at the top. This is actually a target item, which I want to talk to you guys about. Let me click on this item. Notice that Target actually has an eBay account. Now, I've had a few of you guys who have run into this where you see on eBay that, that the actual retailer themselves is on eBay. And it's, and it's been a concern for some of you guys because you're like, well, you know, if I'm, if I'm at Target and I'm getting it for $200, how am I supposed to get on eBay and sell it for more than that when Target's already on eBay, right? Well, let me explain it by looking at the title of their product here. What's the matter with what Target's done here on their listing? If you look at their listing, what's the blaring problem that you see, you guys that are a little more advanced on eBay? Yeah, their title is terrible, right? Look at this. That's their title right there. Clearly, Target doesn't put enough time and energy into their, or maybe they just don't know, but but they're doing it wrong, aren't they? Because if they wanted to sell this thing effectively, their title wouldn't just be Luther Storage Cabinet Brown. It would be it would be Wooden Brown Storage Cabinet Luther Home Decor right modern they would start using lots of key words extend out their title and make it much more findable Gla yeah glass front sure whatever keywords that people would type in the only reason why we found this item so well is because we searched for the exact same product didn't we this example right here should help you see the the fundamental reason why this strategy even works because there's no doubt about it, all of these major retailers are, are selling a lot of their stuff on eBay too. And and you're up against them as your competitors. And that's usually, you know, that that's that's pretty deflating to a lot of my clients because they're like, how in the world do I compete with a multi-million dollar company? Well, guess what? These guys don't put the same time and energy into their into their eBay business that you do. eBay is a secondary option for them. A third option they you know they put their products up onto eBay and, and probably make some sales and they do but they don't put time into creating really really good titles that gain them visibility this item is not going to show up under a lot of people's searches and it's because their title is so poorly done so if you guys understand that you guys should understand that you have a legitimate shot to do a much better job than even some of these major retailers because they don't know what they're doing they're not they're not titling things effectively okay so this this would be exciting to me if I found this product I, I I would get really excited about it because what I would do is I would say okay it's clear on eBay because we just did a search there's not there's not very many people selling this item I mean I'm scrolling through the results after my keyword search here I don't I don't see this item showing up a lot you see some similar type items but not a ton of them so I would absolutely list the same item. <clears throat> Excuse me. I don't care that Target's selling it for 200 bucks. I could probably sell this for $300, put together a better title, and do better than they are. This is an example too of something that I don't because I don't see other sellers. I, I can't really, you know, this. I'll have to look for something else. If my whole goal of doing this search was to find another seller that I could. I could spy on their listings and, and figure out, you know, what I wanted to list based on their listings. Um, I, I'd come up empty handed here, right? Because Target's the only one selling this.
but that's a good thing like we just established i like that because then i'm going to list this thing anyway nobody else is selling it on ebay me and target and target did a poor job of marketing it so yeah deborah exactly right it's your keywords that make the difference you can change the keywords when you do a listing and uh, give yourself an edge you don't have to use their same title all right, let's go back and see if we can do another example. We'll just grab another product right here off of Target. Let's just let's grab the one just right next to it. Or maybe this one right here, since this has a lot of reviews. Copy the title, head back to eBay, do a keyword search. See if we can find it. Mid-century modern desk console table. Guess what? I don't see it. Let me put it in quotes. See if that helps. Nope. Nobody's listing it. So shouldn't that be exciting to us? If you if you do if you do a search, and and nobody's got it I mean, that's that's huge for us because we'd be the only one featuring this product on ebay we'd have an edge you, what you'll notice guys and if, if you haven't done this this drop shipping thing for a while this may not be as apparent the reason why i'm showing you target right now guys is because target is not nearly as used as a retail drop shipper like walmart is why because target has a little more of an upscale product, right? Walmart or Walmart's not their their products don't tend to be as nice as, as Target's products. So what attracts a lot of retail drop shippers to Walmart is they can they can mark it up and still make good money off of it um, because Walmart's prices and quality are, are always a little cheaper. If you guys will use different suppliers like Target and others. You, you're you're not going to run up against as much competition. Okay, if I took you back right now and we did another search using a Walmart one, I'll bet we'd find a whole bunch. Let's just do it real quick, just to illustrate my point. Walmart.com. Um, let's, uh, let's grab this featured product right here. No. That's a featured product, so that's not going to be a good example. Let's go back into just one of their general departments. Okay, let's go to like uh, home. And let's grab whatever. Grab this one right here. This spa sensations, memory phone, mattress. Let's copy the title. Let's go paste this into eBay and let's see if we can find it. Remember what the picture looks like. That's the picture. So here it is here. There's one version of it. Here's another version of it. Here's another version. 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 So on and so forth. With Walmart, it's you've got more competition. Um, can you still make money off of Walmart as a supplier? Of course you can. And, and you're going to eat more easily be able to find other people that are selling Walmart products by doing this. Um, so, so if you're, if your whole goal of what I'm teaching you today is to go out and find other sellers and then take their, their same listings that are selling and, and, and sell them for yourself, then, then this is better set with Walmart. But if you want something a little more unique, Target and some of these other suppliers are going to fit the bill. Okay. This is all competitive research. A lot of you guys find that we don't we don't teach you to aggressively uh, research your competition when you're first starting. We like the shotgun spaghetti approach, where you just list without even doing this kind of research, and that and it does work because you can find good good products that way. But if you want to dig in and, and you want to do this in a little bit more of an advanced type method, this is the way to do it. I could come in now and I could look at, uh, I guess it doesn't matter, I'll just click on this random one right here. 
Um, they've sold two of them at 180, 90. How much is it on Walmart? Uh, well, I guess it depends on the size. Anywhere from 150 to uh, 230. Let me check their sold section right here. Yeah, they've sold a couple, but it's been a while since they've sold any. But that's not the point. Remember, we're going to come here to hit see other items. And I can see all the stuff that they've got listed right now. As I scroll through this, I guarantee all of these items are probably Walmart items. This is probably somebody rolling with the, the dropship strategy um, using Walmart as their, their main supplier. But look at this, 18 sold, 14 sold, 16 sold, 18 sold, 137 sold. Right, guys, if you want to figure out what to sell, hey, this one has 26 sold, right? If you want to figure out what to sell, this is a great way to do it. Don't guess at it. Look at what other people are doing. And then do the same thing. Um, Lawrence, Target does gift ship. Yep. They do gift shipping for sure. Yeah, Deborah, you can change the pricing too. You bet you can. In fact, I know I know you're new at this, and so you'll see in, in those trainings I gave you, you'll see how you can do that. But okay, so I mean, we need to finish up. I know I'm going a little over time here, but guys, does this make sense? Does it make sense what we're trying to do? Let me put the steps back up one more time. Okay, step one, find any random product from a retailer, okay? Like Walmart, Amazon, Target, etc. Two, search for the product on eBay. Copy and paste the title in, right? Three, identify the seller of each product and review their listings. That's what we were just doing a second ago. Four, find products that are good sellers by filtering and showing only sold listings. Five, search for the same product on Google.com slash shopping. Six, list it for yourself. Price it and list it. There's not a better way that I know of to find out, do competitive research on eBay and find out what's actually selling. This is the best way. And you're going to stumble across big stores like this one we're looking at right here. This person has uh, 450 items listed right now. I bet they're selling stuff every single day, sold listings. Oh, it's not showing their sold listings. That's okay, because you can see you can see here what's selling. Uh as a as a mat as a point here, these guys it looks like do good till cancelled listings. So if you filter by sold, it won't show it. It's just gonna show you their sold listings right here. So if I click on this, it'll show me how many they've sold. Uh, good question, Delia. So you're asking, should I list e items that are already on eBay or go with the more unique items? I, you know, there, there's an argument to be made for both. I, I do both. I like to explore the stuff that's not listed on eBay because it's it's pretty cool when you're the only exclusive seller of a certain item on eBay. It's pretty rare, but it, it's cool when you can do that. So that's why I like to do that with Target or some of the other more unique retailers out there. I like to be the only seller of an item because that's huge, right? Because then if somebody does a, a search on eBay and they're, they're price hunting on eBay, guess what? You don't have any competition. You're the only one available. They're going to buy from you. Whereas if you get a price hunter, that price hunter may find, you know, the cheaper one that's out there um, if you've got some competition for it. I'm not saying every shopper is a price hunter, but it does make a difference. I would do a combination of both. All right, so guys, I think we may do this again. I, I, you know, I, I always hesitate to show this to some of my newer clients because you can get bogged down in the research. Most of you guys up to this point have probably just done the shotgun approach: list, 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 list as many as many things as you possibly can. Still a good strategy. Uh, but this this is going to be helpful for you guys on a more advanced level. Okay. Um, 
again, we'll consider doing this more next time. Just as a reminder, we won't be doing next week, but we will be doing it the following. Um, so stay tuned. Okay. All right. I'm going to turn off the recording. If you guys are watching this recorded, thanks for coming along.